So hi, I'm Carmen Smith. Um, currently, I'm a rising sophomore at the University of Richmond. Um, I'm a chemistry major and an art minor. And this summer, not only was I an NSDP associate, but like Casey said, I did research at my home institution. So the title of my research is Investigating the Inflammatory Response of Human Epithelial Cells When Exposed to Fusel Particles. So just to show you like the flow, of my presentation, like I'm gonna get a bit of give, give a bit of background on how like the immune system functions and like its relation to inflammatory response. Then I'm gonna tell you about me and my lab partner's methodology and show you a bit of our data. So, for background, what is the role of the immune system? It defends the body against infection. It helps to maintain host homeostasis and is composed of two main parts. So those two main parts are innate immunity and adaptive immunity. So innate immunity is like your first line of defense. It takes effect immediately. It's general and nonspecific, meaning it doesn't differentiate between types of pathogens, while your adaptive immunity takes effect over time. So it's specific and it's built up after exposure to diseases or vaccinations. So more about it like adaptive, like in terms of like vaccination, like you can think of like the COVID vaccine or like your flu shots, things like that. So like it just helps your body build a better defense when you're exposed, if you're exposed to it later. So here's a little diagram or whatever. And it just, um, the hours here for innate immunity, which is like your first response, it just shows you like it's fast, it's quick, while um, adaptive, it takes like a bit of time. And then also um, these are the cells I was looking at for like more contact. So it's like, your epithelial like lung cells, like those are like your first line of defense. So more background, what is inflammation? So general, like just the definition of it, it's just your body's response to like an irritant, like how your body responds to inflection. It has four main signs, pain, heat, swelling, and redness. So cytokines are small proteins produced when a pathogen is present in the, is present in the body so with chemical signaling, cytokines alert immune cells to the site of infection. Those are specifically called chemokines, but like, that's more information. So <laughs> inflammation is just like a response of, <clears throat> inflammation is just like a response of the immune system. So research questions. Basically, my lab was just looking at um, how do like toxicants impact immune response and do these toxicants induce inflammation. So like the way my prof professor, my research professor set it up, we had this kind of like choose your own adventure book style. So we got to, oh, let me put this down. Um, we had like a, like you got to choose which cell line you were working with. So it was um, between mouse macrophages and um, human lung epithelial cells. So I did that, A549, and then you got to choose your toxicant. So it was like wood smoke or diesel exhaust particles. And then you got to choose your antioxidant, um, which like you had like, there was a long list, but I, we chose resveratrol. And the reason we chose that is just like, me and my lab partner were interested, like um, I have a car, I drive, yup. So like when you go to like fill your car up, if you like don't have an electric car, like just like the amount of like diesel particles you're inhaling and like what that could do to your body. Cause like pretty much everyone pumps gas and stuff like that. So just seeing like how research like impacts everyday life. That's what we were interested in. So here's like the flow of our lab, our methodology. So we grew our human epithelial lung cells, our A549, and then we set up dose response experiments. So we exposed the cells to like different concentrations of these diesel particles. And then we harvested the supernatants and the lysates. Then we investigated our antioxidant with Veritol to see if it lowered inflammatory response in the, presence of diesel, in the presence of diesel. And we use various assays such as LDH, ELISA, RT-PCR, and gel electrophoresis to see the impact of diesel particles on A549 cells. Um, so just going over like our cell culture conditions. So adenosarcinomic human alveolar basal or like human lung epithelial cells or A549 we just cultured them in our media, VMEM, and we had like a million cells plated in a six-fold dish in which we use LPS as our positive control. LPS is just 
lipopolysaccharide, and it's like bacterial toxins. So like it's just a good baseline. Oh, it's bacterial toxins that cause inflammation. So it's just like a good baseline for our positive. And then we used a well of cells and media, which served as our negative. So then we dosed our cells with increasing amount of diesel from 100 to 400 micrograms per milliliter. And then, or resveratrol, where we used one micromolar to 20 micromolar. And then we incubated them for about a day. And uh, at 37 degrees Celsius, which is also 98.6 Fahrenheit, which like mimics like the process in the body. Like that was our goal. And then supernatants and, our li and lysates were harvested and used for various assays. So supernatants are like the liquid the cells grow in, while lysates are like, after you take out the liquid, the super, like you pipe it out, your six full plate, the, like the supernatants, um, you use lysis buffer and you break open the cells. And, like that's how you harvest your lysates. Um, yeah, so then I included this fun little picture of just like, just like the cells under the microscope. Um, so basically, where they come from, it's a, it's a mortalized cell line, basically meaning it can like proliferate indefinitely. Basically, it's just like multiplying. So like you can always just get cells. So it's derived from this 58-year-old white man who had lung cancer for the background. And then our various bioassays, more into them. So we did reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, or RT-PCR, and gel electrophoresis. So PCR is just used to detect and visualize gene expression. So after harvesting our cells, we isolated and purified our RNA. And then we were able to make our complementary DNA, or cDNA, then, which allowed us to amplify our genes of interest. And then we ran our DNA on an agarose gel containing ethidium bromide. Then we did ELISA, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So we just used that to measure the production of cytokines. Then we did LDH, lactate dehydrogenase cytotoxicity, cytotoxicity assay. And that just cal calculates like the percentage of cell death after you lyse the cells. Um, so here's just another image just to um, put it more in per perspective. So like I said, like your um, primary response, your first line of defense, those are your lung cells. And they can produce like um, certain cytokines. So like you have like IL-6, IL-10, TNF-alpha, IL-8-2. So it's just like um, general cytokine production when your body is exposed to like a pathogen. So here's my data me and my lab partner have, which is very interesting. So we, uh, this is our dose, this is our first dose response. And this is like a compilation of like, like at least three to four different experiments. That's why the error bars are a bit, bit large, probably need to repeat some experiments. But um, basically, we, this is when we use the, like, the increasing amounts of diesel. So like 100 to 400. So as you can see, like, uh, but like the trend kind of looks like as you increase the diesel, the diesel, the amount of cell death goes up. But also like our error bars are a bit large, so we might have to like repeat those experiments or like try to replicate the experiments within like the same day or something because like we would use our data from experiments from different days. So like there could have been like a pipetting error or something like that. So we um for our like resveratrol samples where we had to use like a concentration of diesel. We chose the 200, like looking at the error bar, it's like a better one. So this is our ELISA data. And the gene we amplified was IL-8. And it's a pro-inflammatory pro cytokine. And basically, um, so uh, on the left is just the diesel samples. But on the right is like resveratrol. So looking at like the diesel samples, it was like pretty consistent until like 300 to 400. So you like a potential reasoning for that is that the diesel became too toxic for the cells at such a high concentration. So we see less of that IL-8 in our samples. And then for uh, the right side, this is our concentrations of resveratrol. Um, we see something happen around 
10, it like drops off at 20. That probably needs to be repeated, but it was like working until it wasn't. And here's just my last slide. Um, I just want to acknowledge my partner. Um, I worked with a lab partner this summer. Members of our lab, our lab professor, Dr. Shannon Jones, um, the SMART program, which funded us, and the NSBP summer program, and my mentor, Casey Wagner. Any questions? Questions for Carmen? Yes. Carlton. Uh, so you worked with human lung epithelial cells. Mm -hmm. um, exactly, uh, is it like, does it grow like a tissue? And so some of those cells are actually um, like immune cells. Uh, like a, where did, does the immune response come from the epithelial cells themselves? Can you repeat your question? Oh, so are human lung epithelial cells like immune cells or are they like just like generic cells that operate? In oh, I see. Um, basically, they're just like your first line of defense. So like the cytokine production. So basically like they'll tell other immune cells to come help once they've like experienced a pathogen, if that makes sense. Okay. So they don't, uh, they aren't responsible for like the actual like lung no. function besides. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, <clears throat> are there is there anybody on Zoom that has a question? Okay. Um, so I did have one quick question, and that was in the first plot of data you showed. Uh, it looked like there was, uh, yeah, here. It looked like you got a pretty large jump here when you went from yeah. one hundred microliters or micrograms per mil. Or, leader. Mm -hmm. But then it kind of died off a little bit. Do you have a feeling for, this was for diesel. Yes, right? this is diesel. Do you have a feeling for like, if we were at a gas station and we are like inhaling stuff, mm -hmm. how that number fits anywhere with respect to these? Oh, it fits? Um, I wouldn't say, like, I don't know that, but I just know it is harmful for you. And then like, um, you should consider like um, over simulation of the immune system and how like that could cause problems for later. Maybe try not to be at the gas pump for too long. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Let's thank Carmen again. Thank you.